These scribes pretending to speak for God believe that their various and assorted scriptures are the only source of truth in our world. As if all of reality is a lie and only the lies and the sacred fables are true. As if wisdom is foolish and only the fools are wise. Who is this ignorant person saying such foolish words without knowledge? If you're looking for Job, I'm not him. I'm from the 21st century, and I have knowledge of things he did not. Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. <clears throat> That's funny. When I inquire of your believers, they habitually duck and dodge every critical point or query, but I don't have a problem with answering questions. And unlike your followers, if I don't know the answer, I'll be honest enough to say so. I won't pretend to know things no one even can know because that's what faith is all about. And that's why I reject faith as fundamentally dishonest and autodeceptive. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundations? Tell me if you understand. I wasn't anywhere yet, and neither were you. You weren't even invented yet. And the earth doesn't have foundations. No pillars, no columns, no firmament. Instead... Our planet is an accretion of cosmic dust drawn together by gravity, a force which contradicts the disk world described in the Bible and the Quran. Who mocked off its dimensions? Surely you know. I know that no one did that, at least not until human explorers sailed around the world taking measurements to draw up maps. Who stretched a measuring line across it? Again, no one did that. That's not how cartographers take measurements. On what were its footings set, or who laid its cornerstone, while the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? There's no such thing as angels. And the stars don't sing because they're not living beings. They don't have personalities. And the earth has no footing. There is no cornerstone because the earth is just another planet. Now, you describe the earth as a flat disk that is set on pillars so that it doesn't move. But in reality... The Earth is an oblate spheroid floating, or rather falling, eternally at tens of thousands of miles an hour through an infinite abyss of mostly empty space. Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness, when I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place, when I said, This far you may come and no further? Here is where your proud waves halt. You're asking who did this when you did this, assuming your conclusion. But you didn't do any of that, because none of that ever happened. The earth wasn't born from a womb, nor was it made from an eternal ocean, like it says in the Bible. There is no water above the firmament, because there is no firmament, and no water above where the firmament isn't. The sea that is here on the earth is not caged with bars, and it has no doors either. The superstitious savages who wrote the Bible had no idea what they were talking about. Have you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place that it might take the earth by the edges and shake the wicked out of it? Wickedness is not a material thing. At best, it's a verb. <laughs> who are you to come with such foolish words without knowledge? Because you're asking some really stupid questions, especially for someone who dares criticize others for their ignorance when you don't know anything yourself. Morning is not something you talk to because it can neither hear nor understand you. And dawn is just the earth turning to the point that the sun becomes visible from wherever you are on the globe because it is a globe, not a flat disk with edges. There are no edges to grab onto because the earth is not flat like you think it is. The earth takes shape like clay under a seal. Its features stand out like those of a garment. No, I just told you. The earth is more of a sphere, like a ball, not a circle like the flat seal of wax that you're talking about. The wicked are denied their right, and their upraised arm is broken. And by wicked, I assume you mean unbelievers, since you inflate somehow blind gullibility with being good and the lack of credulity or, or more skepticism as being somehow inherently evil. But we have the light of reason, and turning on that light causes your followers to scatter like cockroaches. Have you journeyed to the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? Myself personally? No. 
but other people have. And that's how we know that there are no springs piping in water from outer space because outer space is not full of water like you keep saying it is. Have the gates of death been shown to you? There are no gates of death. We don't go anywhere when we die. We just shut down and turn off. Have you seen the gates of the deepest darkness? Well, that sounds like a very romantic image. There are no gates of deepest darkness either. Some god you are. You don't have a clue, do you? Have you comprehended the vast expanse of the earth? Tell me if you know all of this. Yes, I have, but it's not as vast as you might imagine. Turns out the earth is just a moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam, which disappears entirely as you zoom out on the cosmic scale, because it's just a pale blue dot of rock and metal, less than 12,800 kilometers in diameter. Though it might seem bigger to you, since you keep picturing it flattened out like a map. What is the way to the abode of light? And where does darkness reside? Can you take them to their places? Do you know the paths to their dwellings? Surely you know, for you were already born. You have lived so many years. I'm a lot younger than you, but you are a lot younger than your believers imagine, since they imagined you, and you cannot exist outside of their collective imagination. That's why you don't know anything more than your believers do, or rather, what little they did know thousands of years ago. For example, poor Job, if there was such a person, wasn't smart enough to know that darkness is not a thing that has a residence, and light doesn't have an abode either. Panpsychism isn't true, so quit anthropomorphizing everything. Darkness is merely the absence of light, and light is what happens when an atom releases photons as it changes energy states. So light can emerge from any atom in the universe, but it doesn't always come from any of them. Have you entered the storehouses of the snow, or seen the storehouses of the hail, which I reserve for times of trouble, for days of war and battle? How stupid are you? There are no such storehouses. You're not much of a god, are you? You don't even know about the hydrological cycle? What is the way to the place where the lightning is dispersed, or the place where the east winds are scattered over the earth? What idiot writes your dialogue? There is no location for either of these things. Lightning is due to a buildup of static charge caused by the movement of tiny ice crystals and storm clouds at high altitude. Wind is differential heating rates of land masses versus bodies of water, and this disparity causes changes in barometric pressure, which drives the wind. Both of these things can happen anywhere in the air, but the locations always vary, and not even you, not even God, can point to the place where either one always happens. Who cuts a channel for the torrents of rain and a path for the thunderstorm to water a land where no one lives, an uninhabited desert, to satisfy a desolate wasteland and make it sprout with grass? No one does that because no one needs to. The rain cuts its own channels, and the winds that drive the storms can change also, thoughtlessly, according to dynamic conditions and pressure that I just described a moment ago. Does the rain have a father? No, and it doesn't have a creator, either. Who fathers the drops of dew? Nobody. Warm air can be humid because the warmer it is, the more water it can hold, but when the air cools down again then it can't hold as much, and the water condenses back out of the air to become dew. From whose womb comes the ice? I don't know, but I wouldn't want to meet her. Who gives birth to the frost from the heavens when the waters become hard as stone, when the surface of the deep is frozen? No one. There is no womb for ice. Even Job would have known better than that, that ice is not something you give birth to. It's just frozen water. You get high enough in the atmosphere or far enough away from the equator to, you know, at the right time of year when it gets cold enough and water will freeze. Can you bind the chains of Pleiades? Can you loosen Orion's belt? Can you bring forth the constellations in their season or guide the bear with its cubs across the heavens? None of the constellations you speak of really exist. 
They're only illusions of pareidolia, patterns that exist only in our minds when we look in that direction from our perspective here on the Earth. But if we could get close enough to any of the stars in Pleiades, Orion, Ursa Major, or Minor, those illusions would vanish long before we got there. And we would see that this star has no actual association with any of those other stars. Instead, from there, we would use our imaginations to connect the dots to, to, for the stars we could see from there to see things that aren't there and imagine whole new constellations that, again, not real. They only exist in our minds. Do you know the laws of the heavens? Some of them. The laws of nature are not actually laws in the sense that you know, they don't need a lawgiver. Instead, what we erroneously call natural laws are really the properties or consistencies of given phenomena that we've figured out so far. And we don't always get it right. For example, Newton's laws of gravity needed some revision, and Einstein did that with relativity, but Einstein's understanding may need some improvement too. Can you set up God's dominion over the earth? God does not exist. God is like a constellation, something people think they perceive, but that they can't agree on because it isn't really real. It's just something that some folks imagine, or they like to make believe as if someone is listening whenever they're talking to themselves. Can you raise your voice to the clouds and cover yourself with a flood of water? I know that magic spells often involve the chanting of incantations to evoke supernatural forces or entities to control or forecast natural events. But the rain doesn't come because you talk to the clouds. Clouds can't hear you, and they don't obey either. Do you send the lightning bolts on their way? Do they report to you, here we are? Who do you think you are, Zeus? Nobody is throwing lightning bolts. Not Jehovah, not Jupiter, nor Thor, nor any other god either. Who gives the ibis wisdom and gives the rooster understanding? Again, it's not a who, it's a what. Instinct is when a propensity for certain behaviors become ingrained in our DNA. It's largely a product of natural selection of mutations, not a gift from any imaginary magician. Who has the wisdom to count the clouds? You mean, who has the wisdom not to? Because clouds are not quantifiable, being composed of millions of tiny components, many of which keep changing states, adding to or subtracting from the whole constantly, continuously, in such a way as to make counting clouds impossible and a fool's errand, because one cloud can become ten clouds in a single minute or evaporate in evanescence just as quickly. Who can tip over the water jars of the heavens when the dust becomes hard and the clods of earth stick together? There are no water jars in the heavens. Instead, there's a hydrological cycle that Job's God apparently doesn't understand at all. Do you hunt the prey for the lioness and satisfy the hunger of the lions when they crouch in their dens or lie in wait in the thicket? No, and neither do you. Well, we might provide for them if we keep them as pets or in zoos, but even then we don't have to hunt for them anymore because we raise livestock for that purpose. Who provides the food for the raven when its young cry out to God and wander about for lack of food? Ravens are smart enough to know that they have to take care of themselves. They don't pray because there's no one to pray to. Humans are probably the only animals who believe in God, except for our pets, of course, because dogs think that we are their gods and cats think that they are our gods. Do you know when the mountain goats give birth? Yes. Do you watch when the foe bears her fawn? I have, yeah, but I prefer to leave them alone. Do you count the months till they appear? Well, that's not really my thing. I'm, I'm more into snakes, personally, in which case the answer is yes. Do you know the time they give birth? Typically any time in late spring. They crouch down and bring forth their young. Their labor pains are ended. Their young thrive and grow strong in the wilds. They leave and do not return. What? Was there supposed to be a question? 
Who let the wild donkey go free? Who untied its ropes? No one, because wild donkeys are wild. They started out that way. They were already wild before humans ever domesticated anything. I gave it the wasteland as its home, the salt flats as its habitat. It laughs at the commotion of the town. It does not hear a driver's shout. It ranges the hills for its pasture and searches for any green thing. No, you didn't give anything to anything because you're not anything. You're imaginary. You're just an excuse that ignorant people made up to explain whatever they didn't understand. Will the unicorn consent to serve you? Will it stay in your manger at night? Can you hold it to the furrow with a harness? Will it till the valleys behind you? Will you rely on it for its great strength? Will you leave your heavy work to it? Can you trust it to haul in your grain and bring it to your threshing floor? The unicorn is a very powerful animal, but it's not very smart. And those two factors together make it a lot harder to train than a horse or a dog or an elephant. The wings of the ostrich flap joyfully, though they cannot compare with the wings and the feathers of the stork. She lays her eggs on the ground and lets them warm in the sand, unmindful that her foot may crush them, or that some wild animal may trample them. She treats her young harshly, as if they were not hers. She cares not that her labor was in vain, for God did not endow her with wisdom or share her a share of good sense. Yet, when she spreads her feathers to run, she laughs at horse and rider. Again, your hatred of ostriches aside, and maybe if you don't like ostriches that much, you, you could have built them better, I suppose. Uh, give them the, the ability to fly since they have wings. That would have been an intelligent design work. Certainly better than what you're, what you're bitching about. You're complaining about your own workmanship here. Uh, but all of that aside, wasn't there supposed to be a question? Do you give the horse its strength or clothe its neck with a flowing mane? Do you make it leap like a locust, striking terror with its proud snorting? No, and neither did you. Horses and donkeys started out wild from a common ancestor who developed that mane through mutations in an ever-changing genome. It paws fiercely, rejoicing in its strength, and charges into the fray. It laughs at fear, afraid of nothing. It does not shy away from the sword. The quiver rattles against its side along with the flashing spear and lance. In frenzied excitement it eats up the ground. It cannot stand still when the trumpet sounds. At the blast of the trumpet it snorts, aha, and it catches the scent of the battle from afar, the shout of the commanders and the battle cry. I guess Arabian stallions must be different from American Morgans and such that I'm used to because... <laughs> They're definitely afraid of even loud noises. Does the hawk take flight by your wisdom and spread its wings toward the south? Not by my wisdom, nor by God's either, but by their evolution from diminutive dinosaurs who learned a new and more advantageous means of hunting. Does the eagle soar at your command and build its nest on high? Not by my command, nor by God's command either, but according to their own volition and evolution, which you don't know anything about, from dinosaurs, which you also don't know anything about. It dwells on a cliff and stays there at night. A rocky crag is its stronghold. From there it looks for food. Its eyes detect it from afar. Its young ones feast on blood. And where the slain are, there it is. Yes, I know what an eagle is, and we have them in my country, too. We even put them on our money. Not that that means anything, because, unfortunately, some twit put God on our money, too. You wanted to argue with God, all-powerful. You wanted to correct me and prove that I was wrong, so give me your answer. I did, but you can't understand it, because you're not real. 
There are those who say that we don't really exist except as a dream in the mind of God, a God who created us in his own image. But of course, they got all of that backwards. Men created gods in his own image. Gods are the stuff of dreams only. And it's time to wake up.